On this edition of City Spain, City Council talks dollars and cents as they work toward finalizing the 2013 city budget. Ground is broken for the city's first ever municipal marina, and downtown gets decked out for the holidays. City Span starts right now. Hello everyone, I'm Margaret Williams. Welcome to City Span, your source for news and information about Savannah City Government. City Council is poised to adopt a budget that includes a nearly $300 million spending plan for 2013. The final budget came after nine months of staff work, three all-day council workshops in November, and two public hearings. The city's annual budgeting preparations begin in early spring with a budget kickoff event and run through the remainder of the year. During this time, various teams are developed to review and analyze operational and capital needs for the organization while maintaining optimal service delivery throughout the community. By the fall season, the Research and Budget Office begins production of a comprehensive budget recommendation for the city manager's review that is comprised of not only the annual operating budget, but also the five-year capital improvement program. With uncertainties in the economy and negotiations with the county over sales tax revenue still unresolved, the budget is extremely conservative. There will be no employee pay raises, and the property tax rate will stay right where it is at 12.5 mils, a rate almost 28% below what it was 15 years ago. The budget includes more than $68 million for police services, including money to fund a new 25 officer city drug squad to target street-level drug dealing. There's nearly $12 million budgeted to improve our sewage infrastructure, about a million dollars to repave roads, and nearly $750,000 in cultural spending that will be allocated to organizations across the city. While the monthly water and sewer bill of the average Savannah household will increase $1.50 per month to pay for federally mandated improvements, Savannah rates are still the lowest in Georgia and among the lowest in the entire Southeast, according to independent surveys. You can view the budget online by visiting savannahga.gov budget. City leaders stood with neighborhood residents to break ground last month on a $4 million project that will transform the city's only publicly owned marina into a major community asset on Savannah Southside. You know, um, this, is, this is a great occasion and it's something that we've looked forward to for a very long time out of here. And it's something for everyone. It's something for folks who want to kayak, something for folks who want to leave their boat here, something for folks who want to go out for the day, or folks that want to bring their grandkids or kids down to play on the playground or just have a picnic, or throw a line in the water. So this is a, a totally encompassing park for the family that's being developed here, along with a functioning marina. It shows commitment to um, how our council feels about the quality of life for all residents of Savannah. Uh, the marina is a venue for all. Uh, all of Savannah uh, can enjoy it. Um, the project will include a new fishing pier, a large picnic shelter and playground, replacement and expansion of the floating dock, a new marina store and boat hoist, dedicated parking for vehicles with boat trailers, and additional covered boat storage. The city purchased the property several years ago when a planned residential development threatened to limit public access to the Forest River. The city worked with residents to design almost $4 million in improvements to the facility. Another groundbreaking on the city's south side took place last month. This one for a new fire station to serve the residents of the Bradley Point South area off of Highway 17. Savannah Fire's Mark Keller has this report on the new facility. On three, ready? One, two, three. The third time was a charm for officials when it came to putting shovels in the dirt for the new Bradley Point Fire Station. Weather delayed two previous attempts to get things going at the site that's just inside the entrance to Bradley Point South. The new 10,000 square foot station will replace a temporary facility off Highway 17 that currently houses Savannah Fire's Engine 12. It's another move forward in a long time plan to improve the department's infrastructure and services to the citizens. What we're trying to do is um, essentially upgrade these, the, the facility. Uh, it gives the firefighters a, a, a place really to call home. 
It's a place that's more permanent in some of the weather conditions, and it gets us closer to a very uh, congested residential area. The chief is particularly excited about the upcoming construction, especially since the mayor and city council members were able to keep the project on target despite recent economic strains. The chief envisions the new station as a model for future fire department facilities and expects the prototypical design to help reduce future expenses. I think it's more efficient um, because once you start, uh, once you have a standard design, it's easier, to, actually you're saving construction costs because you're doing the same things over and over again. But it's also easier in terms of maintenance and, and those type things. So I think long term going to a standardized design will save us money. The new station will sit on a four and three quarter acre site and will be constructed in accordance with FEMA guidelines for critical facilities. As part of its design, the station will be built to resist a minimum 130 mile per hour basic wind speed. Construction of the new fire station should take about a year once work at the site begins. Savannah squares are often considered the city's crown jewels and have been celebrated along with the city's unique grid pattern of streets throughout the city's history. Over the past couple of months, City officials and staff, along with members of the Park and Tree Commission, gathered to honor and celebrate recent improvements in three of these unique downtown parks. Wright Square, one of the city's most historic squares, received a makeover that started in April, but was delayed when city workers uncovered an undocumented cistern in the square. Once inspected, reinforced, and surveyed, a permanent marker was placed above the opening of the cistern. Park and tree staff then completed work on the square that included relocation of existing plants, tree pruning, installation of new wrought iron, iron benches, and repairs to brick walkways. Um, certainly for quite some time we've been hearing um, that we need to be able to protect our brand and our squares is what makes Savannah unique, it makes Savannah special, and certainly we need to make sure we put our money where our mouth is, so certainly I'm glad that our council um, continues to do that and we will continue to make sure that um, being your partner, making sure that we make sure our squares stay uh, pristine. The Wright Square makeover is part of a larger effort by the city's park and tree department to assess conditions in all 22 of Savannah squares. Another made-over square garnered the attention of the Georgia Forestry Commission. Last year's revitalization of Chippewa Square was recently honored with the Commission's top honor for communities, the Outstanding Community Grand Award, which recognizes the city or county that does the most to build a program that conserves, manages, and enhances the urban environment. As State Forester, I want, want you all to know that we're extremely proud of the work that Savannah does in managing their urban and community forest. You really do have the, the crown jewels of, of the state here in Savannah. Y'all do a tremendous job managing that, that forest. The Chippewa Square project was designed to enhance the existing live oak canopy, improve public safety, reduce vegetative competition, reestablish scenic vistas, and ensure reliable seasonal color. And lastly, officials gathered in Johnson Square to receive a $10,500 check from the Savannah Downtown Garden Club. The check was presented by Garden Club President Mary Olson and project coordinator Heidi Marie Reed to cover the cost of the construction of a wrought iron picket fence around the Green Monument. There were several projects we had to consider and ultimately our membership decided that to do a big project rather than a bunch of little $100 projects. I'm very proud they agreed to do this and here's the moment now that we are presenting this to the city of Savannah like a Christmas gift. The fence, similar to ones found in other downtown squares, will protect the green monument and surrounding landscaping while enhancing the overall appearance of this popular square. Coming up on City Span, investigating one of Savannah's great architectural mysteries. And later, we're decking the streets and squares for the holidays.
As you know, since 2008, as part of its Thrive Initiative, the city has been working to make Savannah a greener place by instituting programs to help reduce the city's carbon footprint and promote an eco-friendly and sustainable community. With this month's Thrive Tip, City of Savannah Sustainability Coordinator Garrison Marr shows us cheap, do-it-yourself energy improvements that can help keep your home comfortable and save you money at the same time. On October 27th, the City of Savannah teamed up with the local United States Green Building Council and other volunteers for the first ever Savannah Weatherization Day. Now the USGBC and Georgia Power supplied the materials, a property owner in Dixon Park supplied the property, and volunteers got to work making it more energy efficient for the tenants. The event is part of a broader National Weatherization Day effort, a national day of service to highlight the energy savings possible in our nation's buildings. And those savings were surprising. With materials like those here, University of Upper Austria students estimate $116 in annual savings from materials supplied by the USGBC for just under $60 a housing unit. So what are these materials and what do they do? Water heater blankets provide insulation for your water heater, making it possible to use less energy for keeping your hot water hot. These water heater blankets cost around $20 and are available in every hardware store and bring savings of about $60 per year. It's no secret that uh, CFL bulbs save money, but in addition to that, they last several times longer. And a uh, four pack of these bulbs was picked up at a local hardware store for five bucks. And our Austrian students estimate that this will save $10 annually. Sealing doors with weather stripping has a couple of great advantages. Of course, you'll be reducing HVAC costs caused by hot and cold air leakage from the inside to outdoors, but you'll also be helping prevent a pathway uh, for small pests to enter the home. The rubber seal weather stripping was purchased from a local hardware store for about $5. Our Austrian students estimate the annual savings at around $20. The entrance to the attic usually represents an an area where the insulation is not in place. As a result, it can be a place where hot air enters the home in the summer or cold air enters the home in the winter. Installing an attic hatch cover helps to minimize this effect, resulting in a direct savings for the homeowner. There are a number of models available, most for under $50. Our Austrian students estimate a $16 annual savings for this measure. We're saving energy and money in Dixon Park on Savannah Weatherization Day. It's one more way to think Green, Green Savannah. Savannah. For more on the City's Thrive Initiative, or for more ways you can go green, head to the City's website, savannahga.gov. When is it safe for kids to play in the street? Well, you might think never, but coming in 2013, thanks to a $50,000 grant, city streets will be temporarily closed to traffic and open to the community. A project of the Partnership for a Healthier America, chaired by First Lady Michelle Obama, Play Streets closes specific streets to traffic on a routine basis and opens that space to the community to encourage physical activity. It offers a high impact approach to encouraging and increasing physical activity, particularly in neighborhoods that lack sufficient open space. I am excited about this opportunity to bring Savannah residents and Savannah visitors outside enjoying our local culture, our local food, and being active. The $50,000 grant from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia will be used to fund four events in Savannah that will include a dozen community groups and combine the arts, physical activity, and local food. The events will include a chalk sports cyclovia in April, during which the city will attempt to break the world hopscotching record. A bicycle bot party in May featuring bicycle art and tricycle time trials. A skate and shake in September featuring a synthetic ice skating rink and an expanded West Broad Street YMCA Fall Festival. Call it a bicycle block party, call it a cyclovia, call it a moving street festival, just don't call it boring. Details about the location and dates and the partnership of community groups taking on Play Streets events in Savannah can be found online at www.ahealthieramerica.org slash playstreets. If you've ever been down to Factors Walk, no doubt you've seen the old brick vaults built into the retaining wall next to City Hall. Known as the Clusley Embankment Stores, the 170-year-old vaults 
considered to be among Savannah's great archaeological mysteries, have been used for parking over the past several decades with little known about their historical use. But recently, staff and students from Georgia Southern University began archaeological work on the vaults that should help tell the story of these historically significant, publicly owned structures. The first phase of the work included use of laser scanning technology called LIDAR to create a detailed three-dimensional model of the four vaults. The machine behind me basically fires a beam of light to measure the distance from the scanner behind me to the object. And uh, it takes those measurements at about 50,000 points per second and creates a, uh, a basically a three-dimensional model of the uh, vaults here as they are, as they stand today. And uh, we'll also have a model generated that's a solid object model that will represent how the vaults would have looked originally. Uh, so with the doors on and, and kind of a reconstruction of the site. That work was followed up by the use of ground penetrating radar to help identify those areas to avoid, like underground utilities, as well as those areas to concentrate on during the excavation. What we're using it for is to see if we can locate any types of pipes, water lines, or gas lines. That way when we come in here and we start doing uh, the digging process of it, I'm not going to place a unit on top of a gas line. So that would be very bad. It can also pick up other features, uh, such as if we were locating a uh, plantation house, it can pick up features from where the house was located. Uh, so it can pick up other anomalies uh, like that, besides just pipes. Over the next few months, staff and students will be conducting excavations in each of the four vaults. Several of these days, including Saturday, December 15th, will be public work days where members of the public can ask archaeologists about the work and watch it in progress. Once the archaeological work is complete and research into historical records has been done, the city plans to install signs that will interpret the site's historical significance as well as its contribution to the larger Savannah story. For more information about the Kluski Embankment stores and the upcoming public work days, contact the city's research library and municipal archives at 651-6412. Each month on CitySpan, we team up with the folks at Bank on Savannah, an initiative of Step Up Savannah, to provide you with some easy ways to help make the most of your money. With this month's Bank on This tip, here's Richard Reed from Consumer Credit Counseling Service of Savannah. Today we'll speak to Erica Wiggins, a Carver State Bank customer who benefited from the Bank on Savannah program. She now volunteers to share the benefits of the Bank on Savannah program with the rest of the community. Well, having a relationship with my bank has changed my financial picture into a more broader standpoint in establishing my credit score, um, helping me financially keep a, an account of where my money's going and how it's being spent it's a necessity to have a bank account because you don't know what type of emergencies might occur in your life or when you might need the bank to help you. With the way the economy is right now, people need to establish some type of credit or some type of connection with a bank in order to um, have financial stability. Bank on Savannah helps people who don't have an account understand the importance of banking and how you can establish all types of financial backgrounds and help build your credit. It even helps you with your credit scores and um, they can give you credit reports and that's what be, that's the most important thing what people have to understand. Having established credit will help you financially and I think Bank on Savannah is teaching people about being more established and being productive in life. If you'd like to know more about opening a bank account through the Bank on Savannah program, call 912 232-6747 or visit the website www.stepupsavannah.org. Until next time, I'm Richard Reeve and you can bank on this. Ahead on City Span, how city crews are making this holiday season merry and bright.
If you see someone looking into cars or trying door handles, make the call. If you see someone you don't know is knocking on your door, make the call. Real sales representatives will have credentials. If you see someone trying doorknobs or peering into windows, make the call. If you see anything suspicious at all, make the call. 911 if it's an emergency or 234-2020 for tips. Just make the call. The holidays are here, and for many of us, that means we're cooking up traditional foods like baked hams and fried turkeys. It also means we have more cooking fats, oils, and grease to dispose of. And if you think pouring those down the drain is the way to go, you're wrong. Discarding fats, oils, and grease down the kitchen sink creates blockages of city sewer lines and homeowner pipes, which lead to sewage spills and raw sewage backing up into homes. We're trying to educate the public on not pouring it down the drain. Yes, sir. Because if you pour the grease down the drain, although it may be in liquid form going down the drain, it sometimes coagulates in your, in your lines, mm -hmm. and eventually to close off your lines and you start having backups in your homes. An estimated 70% of all sewer blockages in the city of Savannah are caused by improperly discarded grease. To properly dispose of used fats, oils, and grease, let it cool, place it in a sealed container, and throw it in the garbage. Cool it, can it, trash it. You can also recycle your used cooking grease at the city's President Street plant, Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. For more information, visit the city's website at savannahga.gov. The holidays are here, and thanks to a cooperative effort between several city departments, downtown Savannah is decked out in all its holiday finest. Just in time for Thanksgiving, city workers were putting the finishing touches on Broughton Street. Crews from the citizen office used a bucket, truck, and ladder provided by the Park and Tree Department to hang garland and wreaths at four of the street's intersections and to place white miniature lights in 76 trees along the street. Everybody worked together, everybody worked on one accord and everybody communicated together and everybody was accountable for the time they said they would be and uh, they was very dependable and they did a job and got in and got it done and you know and uh, lighting up Broughton Street and it's gonna make it look real pretty this year. Other holiday decorations in the downtown area coordinated by the city include white miniature lights and banners along MLK and garland wreaths and lights in Johnson, Wright, Reynolds and Ellis Squares. Decorating assistance was provided by traffic engineering and building maintenance. In addition, the city worked with the Downtown Neighborhood Association in decorating the residential squares and Forsyth Park. You can enjoy the Broughton Street decorations and do all of your holiday shopping in downtown's unique shops and boutiques and get three hours of free parking. Through December 28th, parking is free in city garages every Thursday and Friday. Garages are located at 100 East Bryan Street, 301 West Liberty Street, 132 Montgomery Street, 100 East State Street, and 7 Whitaker Street. Meter Street parking is not included, and daily rates will apply after the first three hours of free parking in the garages. Visit the city's website at savannahga.gov for regular parking rates and hours of operation. That's going to do it for this edition of City Span. Don't forget, for the latest in news and information about the city of Savannah, keep it tuned to SGTV or visit our website, savannahga.gov. From all of us here at the city of Savannah, happy holidays. I'm Margaret Williams. Thanks for watching and thanks for making Savannah your home.